Dave, you said after last Saturday it might take you two or three days to calm, calm the nerves a little bit and you were a bit frustrated. Two, two or three days after and almost a week after, what's your overall view of obviously last Saturday's defeat? Still obviously disappointed with the result because we didn't get what we, what we deserved from the game um, and that's always going to be uh, difficult to take. Um, what you can take out of it is, and what you have to take out of it is loads of positives. Um, and I think, I think the players will take an awful lot, a lot out of it, regardless. Um, lots of good things to comfort. The main good thing being is that it reinforces the fact that um, with what we've got and how we've started, we're, we're as a, a match for whatever we've seen up to now in the in, in the league games, and we. Um, more than held our own and should have beaten a team who are highly fancied to get out of the division. Um, so that's, a, like I say, a huge, a huge positive in terms of, of where we're at. Um, so we well, yeah, players should take an awful lot of belief and comfort the fact that that's, that's the case if we continue to produce the performances that we have. Has there been any specific messages in training this week in terms of obviously last week's defeat and building up to Saturday and what, what kind of needed change? Not really, not really. again, the messages are, are pretty simple um, in terms of we, you look at the, the stats from the game and if the scoreline wasn't on that game, there's only one team that should have won. Um, and the, the, again, statistics can be used and overused in football, but... It was, it was pretty obvious who the better team was and who created the better chances um, and who, if you look at things like expected goals and all those types of things, we, we should have won that game. We didn't. So why we didn't is, is obviously important. Um, I think we put some of the balls, as we, as we do, put the balls in some brilliant areas. Um, we were probably guilty of having bodies in, but timing of those bodies arriving in there um, wasn't wasn't where the balls arrived and, and, and when the balls arrived, which can happen. Um, there were, like I say, there were some balls went in on, on Saturday and across the goal, but without it, again, it sounds daft, but were, were, were too good, the balls were too good in terms of the area they went in. Um, and we weren't ruthless and we weren't clinical in that penalty area. And as much as what happens between the boxes is going to be important in a football match, the deciding factors more often than not become what happens in both 18 yards and six, up and six yard boxes and that was a like I say a real um, a real soccer punch for us at the weekend. It's obviously Tyler out for 12 weeks um, it, was that something you, you kind of expected after Saturday? You, you always fear the worst um, in terms of reaction to the injury um, but in fairness he's not had an injury like that before so th there's always when something happens there's always going to be an initial panic um, and like you say and you do fear the worst I think the, na the nature of it and the nature of hamstrings really they're, they're so broad um, in terms of the damage the severity the um, the rehabilitation how individuals react to um, to different um, I suppose different things through the, the course of treatment and things like that. It, it, very unpredictable. Um, Millwall are quite <coughs> quite rightly are going to be cautious with him because he's a young player who they've got to, they've got to look after. Um, <coughs> and again, it's probably something that you half expect, you hope not. But it, it is what it is. Like I say, it's um, from the game. Um, obviously, a disappointment for him, a disappointment for for us and, and everyone because. Um, he'd started his loan well and you, you hope that over the course would only have improved but he'll go away, let's say, do his, do his rehab, um, make sure he's back to where he was and come back, um, come back hopefully stronger than, than, than when, he's, when he's left. You mentioned there coming back, obviously if it is 12 week expected back from the end of November time which gives him a month still on his loan but um, is obviously always the worry that you know if he, if he gets back and the injury goes away but obviously it, it's a tough one because he started so well and he obviously might not be the exact same player we had at the start of it or um, again in terms of muscle injuries they're not the, they're not the significant injuries especially as a young player that are going to are going to damage or change what you were as a, as a player um, as with any injury there's going to be a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of uncertainty and he's going to have to build confidence up because again especially not that I'm 
um, experience on pulling hamstrings because um, you need to be able to run quickly to be able to do that. Um, but there's always going to be a little bit of what happens when I'm 100%, what happens when I'm full tilt, will it, will it sort of go again, will it last? It, it becomes a management thing and without it sounding the wrong way again, no one wants to get injured. But as a young player who has picked up an injury and again, not hugely significant, but one that could, could impact him. Again, management of injuries and prehab is, is, is massively important. And, and I think sometimes young players can be a little bit maybe lucky um, and because the nature of their bodies can ultimately do what they want, eat what they want, train how they want, get away with things. Um, it'll certainly sharpen his mind and will be beneficial for him, hopefully, further, further down the line in knowing that he's got to do things and will have to do things now that make sure he's strength-wise at his peak all the time so that you don't have, a, 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 let's say, a muscle breaks down um, and affects you what you're what, doing what you're doing and what you're good at. Obviously, with Tyler now out, that must give you a few tough decisions in terms of who starts up there on Saturday as well. This he's it obviously misses the misses the game, so we've 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 a change to to make there. Um, but yeah, look, listen, there are players over the last few weeks have done themselves no harm whatsoever and have put themselves in a position where they're almost holding hand up, saying, "I want to play, I want to play," which is, which is good. Um, I think look at where we are and, and go back um, go back a week or so to the, the, the Carlisle game where we made changes that was it again a, a, a regardless of um, like I said losing on penalties in the game that, that was a real positive in the fact that it showed that the players that we put in the change we made were more than capable of um, of doing a job and being competitive in the league and that, that's going to be something now that take away free agents that, that that's where we are um, so if, if people are out with Injuries, illnesses, which again in the current climate can happen in a flick of a switch. Um, someone could be, as you say, someone could be ill, someone could be isolating for, for, for 10 days. There's, there's all those things that are still around the environment. People need to be able to step in and do a job, and if that's the case, then, uh, then, then so be it. Um, we have to be able to adapt, and we've said before about adversity and, and dealing with that. It will be be great to think that you could name the same start 11 through the whole season. If that was the case, um, you'd have huge continuity. I suggest that you'd be in a great run of form. You'd probably be at the top of the league. That's blue sky thinking. It doesn't happen. Um, injuries, suspensions, illness are all parts and parcel of, of football that you have to deal with. A positive this week, though, obviously we signed Eddie on, um, from Stoke on deadline day. He's, he's come back from international duty this week. I believe yesterday was his first training session. How has he settled in? Yeah, it, it, it'll settle in fine, and the fact that he knows obviously some lads he's familiar with, with, with Will, um, and um, they're a good group and an easy group to, to, to settle into. Um, for, like I say, for him it'll be a quick and a steep learning curve in terms of looking at what we want, did some work yesterday, um, and it, like I say, he'll be um, able to certainly benefit from seeing us in training, seeing the lads, getting used to the environment um, and ultimately seeing what we do in, in a game which you'll get an, an opportunity to, um, to to sort of to do that um, tomorrow. So looking towards obviously tomorrow, uh, Bristol Rovers at home, maybe not the start of the season that they wanted under Joey Barton or what you're expecting from his side? They're, they're obviously a, um, a team that's got relegated and, and, and sort of um, come down into the division a big club at the, at the level who would have been expected to, to bounce straight back with um, with the things that happen in, in terms not just as a, as, a, as a football club with the again the, the climate we're in currently lots of change over the summer sometimes change takes a little time to, to settle down and, uh, and progress and as you said they've not had the start they'd have wanted um, come into the game on the back of a um, back of a win last weekend which I'm sure will do them do them the world of good, but it's, it's ultimately about, about what we do. Um, we're, regardless of um, results, if you like, and last week's results, we're, in a, we're playing well, we're in a good run of form. Um, we've made the vicar a difficult place to come, and we want to make sure that continues and make sure it's a difficult place for them to come to tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be a really good atmosphere again. I'm sure, listen, they, as a, as a club and as supporters, travel in their numbers. I'm sure it'll be, um, again, 
home and away support is bouncing off each other at that, that far end. Um, but we expect a tough game. Um, like I say, a, a, a squad that, from their perspective, that's been heavily invested in, um, will be expected to be at the top end of the table and compete for promotion. Um, lots of players within there that I know. Um, obviously, um, no Giovi, um, no Mangas, who is a former teammate of mine. Um, so I, I, I know what they're like as, as characters. Um, massively from, from Pooley, Harvey Sons, Yeah, right? massively competitive. Um, so there's, there's lots of, um, I suppose, common themes and factors amongst amongst the teams as you, you find with I suppose most teams you play against. So we know what we're what we're coming up against. Um, but I'm sure they're coming in knowing that they're in for a, for a tough game and we've got to look at like I said, look at what we do. You said obviously you a good run of form and that was recognised this week yourself and Tyler both nominated for manager and player of, of the month. It, it, you must have obviously been delighted with that and is it is is great to see obviously the, the hard work and how well we're doing is being recognised on the EFL level? Yeah, I think I think for us the, those sorts of things uh, are, are just reinforcements for for everyone that that we've we've started we've started okay um, and and we want that that to continue. Like I say, I, I, I'll be pretty honest around where we're at. I, I think we're we're probably at least a couple of points short of where we should be. I think we deserve more than than, than what than what we've got. What we've got to do is. Um, that, that's a huge positive. Um, make sure that continues. Um, continue to try and improve, uh, which we which we will. Um, continue to be competitive in, in every game, and probably I suppose a little bit similar to, to last season. That ruthlessness in that that final third um, can really change the outlook of, of games um, and, and make sure that when we are on top and when we are. Um, Playing well, that we, we take our opportunities and we, and we punish teams. And if that's the the case, um, we'll continue to, to do well and hopefully get more reinforcement that what everyone's doing is is right. Just finally, team news for the weekend. Uh, am I right in saying Gav Hollahan's picked up a little bit of an injury following last weekend? Yeah, we've got we've got a few. But that, uh, again, that are little uh, little niggles. Tyler's obviously definitely out. Um, Gav, again, we'll look at, but looks looks unlikely. Um, like I say, the way things are in the current climate, uh, things can change in a, in a heartbeat. So um, you look at, there are other little things with a little bit of, of illness and stuff that we have to make late, late calls on, but um, that potentially brings opportunities for others to step in. And like I say, we're not, we're not um, by, uh, by any means um, panicking or concerned that loads of players that are out, we have to make, make, make calls and, and the calls will be whether we decide to, again, first off risk people, whether we decide to play people that are maybe not 100% but slightly short or whether we go with different options we, and, and we've plenty of scope to do that so like I say, we're, we're going into the game regardless of the team we select. Um, looking to looking to win, looking to keep our record going at the Vic and hopefully that will be the case. Dave, thanks very much. Cheers, thank you.